Is this clear? Is this okay? Yes, bro. All right. Okay. So my topic for today is about the wrist and the hand, more about the palmar aspect. Somebody must have lectured the dorsal. It's more of the tendons. So for the learning objectives of this lecture, by the end of this lecture, I expect that you will be able to know for, if not 100%, be familiarized now the appropriate anatomical terminologies. Identify the anatomical parts and the bones, muscles, and other structures of the wrist and hand. Identify the movement and function of the wrist and hand. Okay. Are you familiar with the anatomical position of the body? So, because this is the best way, you know, as the anatomists say, it's like uh, standardized, standardizing the way in which they view the, the body. Just as maps are normally oriented with north at the top, the standard body, meron din map sa katawan, or we call that anatomical position. Uh, it is about uh, how the body is arranged. It should be in an upright position. So anatomical position, hindi lang nakaiga. At least this is to familiarize the body. I just want you to be, uh, just a reminder, most likely na lecture na ito sa inyo. I hope familiar na kayong lahat. Uh, yung feet at shoulder width, medyo nakabuka ng konti. The upper limbs may position siya, the palms of the hands are positioned. So this is the standard body map. All right? This standard body map or anatomical position, the body is standing upright. With the feet at the shoulder width, so nakabuka siya ng konti and parallel, the toes forward, hindi naka right side, hindi naka angulated. The upper extremities are held out on each side. And you may notice the palms, no? the palms of the hands face forward. So this is an anatomical position. You know, using this standard position will reduce the fusion. It does not matter how the body being described is oriented, the terms are used as it is in the anatomical position. Uh, kailan ba ito na lecture sa inyo regarding this? Ano na kayo? Ano niyo na? Well, one year na kayo, tapos ng first year niyo. So this is like, if I say, you know, there is a scar in the anterior carpal region. Siguro mga physical therapist, medyo alam ito. How about others? Anterior carpal region. Pag anterior, ito yon. Pag sinabing carpal, wrist yan. Carpus. Wrist, carpal. So this is the anterior carpal region. So the anterior will be used as kahit kahiga ka, alam mo, anterior pa rin yan. That's why you have to imagine this always. Kahit naka-prone siya, alam mo kung saan yung anterior. I hope you understand my point. When you make a history, you have to learn all this. So there's such thing as uh, directional terms, anterior, going anterior, going posterior, going superior, inferior, whereas lateral, medial, 
if you're not familiar with anatomical position, pwede tayo malito. I want you to really commit these terms to memory to avoid confusion. When you make a history, history PE, you should know this by heart. Proximal, distal, proximal to the hip, distal to the distal to the phalanges. Okay, this is a good example now. Alam nyo na anterior, I'm very sure posterior, but pag sinabing cranial or craniad, it's going up, it's related above, caudal, it's related below. Ventral is anterior, remember ventral para hindi tayo malito. Where's the ventral of the foot? You have to understand, so this is dorsum of the foot, the ventral surface of the foot is the plantar area. Medial is medial should be at the midline. Anything going towards the midline is medial. Anything near the medial, the so, so HL line is medial. Anything outside to it is lateral, here lateral. Anything proximal going to the center of the body is proximal. Going to the trunk is proximal. All right. So I'm going to ask a simple question. Which answer describes the anatomical position? Boy. 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 Walang, i walang ingay, ha? Yung hindi nag-video, tatawagan ko. Nag-video na kayo lahat. Nag-video na ba? Sige, video na kayo ngayon kasi tatawagan ko yung hindi nag-video. Alam ko, walang problema pag alam niyo yung answer. Okay, I'll call Ray, Reina Pedrosa. Yes, po, Doc. What's the answer, Reina? Letter D, po. Delta? Yes, Doc. Okay, facing outward. Ito, a letter A. Let's try to review. Standing erect, facing observer, arms at side, and palms facing to your side. Parang mali, no? At, eh, and D, P pala. Standing erect, let's answer D. Standing erect, facing observer, arms at side, and palms facing outward. Saan yung outward? Reina. Kaya nga, dapat familiar tayo sa anatomical position. Pag nakaharap ka, facing observer, do you consider that outward? No po, Doc. So ano man? Sige. Can you correct the answer? B po. Correct. <laughs> so it's B. Forward. Sige. Yan lang mga simple lang ba? Pwede nakakalito yan. So please commit yourself sa anatomical positions, the directions. Pwede tayong malito. So kung mag-history taking tayo, these are very important. Ito pa, which statement is correct? So tatawag naman ako yung wala sa video. Daphne, Daphne, Dominic, Chua, Daphne. Baka kumakain pa. Daphne, are you there? Last call, Daphne. Is this Miss or Sir? Lovely Dominic Chua. It's a Miss Doc. Miss, okay. Miss Duffley? 
Last call. All right. Sige. Luckily. Next, sino pa ang tatawagan ko? Gabriel? Miss Gabriel Lawson? Gabriel Lawson? Miss yes, Gabriel? I can hear you, Pudo. Okay, thank you. See, si Miss Gabriel, wala pa? Nandiyan naman siya, pero wala siya sa video. Uh, na, I, na DC po ako, Doc, when I open my Okay, camera. ba to? Yes, po, this is me, Pudo. Hi. Okay. Hello. What's your first name? Gabriel Doc. Gabriel, okay, sorry. Ah. Gabriel. Gabi. Pede bang Gabi? Okay, what's the answer? Which statement is correct? Uh, wait, no, let me read. Letter A, Doc. I'm not sure. Who. Yeah, okay. That's good. You're not sure. Try to be sure. To get anyone who can help, okay. Let's analyze the inside of the thigh, the, that means the medial side of the thigh is lateral to the outside of the thigh. So, pag sinabing inside of the thigh, yung inner thigh, it's medial. So, it is not lateral. Correct? So, this is wrong. Letter B, Gabriel. Yes, Doc. Um, the sound the yes, Doc. is medial to the fingers of the hand. True or false? Um, Are you familiar with anatomical position again? Baka nakalimutan mo. Nakalimutan ko na doon. <laughs> yeah. Alright, alright. Ito lang ito. Let's go back. So, kita mo ito. Pag sinabi kong medial, nasa center ng body. Ang lateral is outside. This is center pag medial. Ito yung thigh. Inner thigh is medial, no? hindi lateral siya. It's medial. Alright? Inner thigh is medial to the lateral of thigh. So, the thumb is lateral to the fingers. Correct? So, yes, this is no. the anatomical position. Okay? You have to really uh, yes, understand yes. this anatomical position. Kahit nakahiga siya, nakataob, Fetal position, alam nyo na kung ano yung medial or lateral. Alright? So this is just an idea. Okay, so let's go back. The thumb is medial, so it's lateral. The knee, how about this one, C? Is this correct or wrong? Yes, Doc. No. Yes, Doc. C is correct. Correct or wrong? Yes, Doc. Correct. Correct, okay. The knee is lateral to the hip. Any ma anybody? May nag-answer doon? You agree? I agree, Doc. Okay. Yes, Doc. Okay. okay, so knee is lateral to the hip. So okay, let's go back to the drawing. Knee is lateral to the hip. This is hip. This is knee. Lateral ba yun? <laughs> Sorry. It's not. No, Doc. Yeah, it is this time. No. Uh, all right. Uh, please try to under, understand the anatomical position. That's why may sinasabing distal, palayo sa body, and proximal, palapit. Simply lang yan, pero nakakalito. Ito, the ankle is medial to the foot. Yes. Okay. Sino nagsabing yes? Para hindi ko nakita. Oh, ako, Doc. Gabriel? Cinco po. 
Hi, Anne. Okay, uncle is medial to the foot. Who wants to who wants to agree? Who wants to disagree? Wala nang disagree. Wala nang agree. Huwag kayong mahiya. Maka ano naman tayo. Okay. All right. Uncle is medial to the foot. Let's go back. This is the uncle and this is the foot. Nayan, uncle and foot. Proximal hand and wrist. Hand is proximal to the wrist, or hand is distal to the wrist. Hand is distal to the wrist. Okay, uncle is lateral. To the toes or foot? Uncle is medial to the toes. Uncle is proximal to the toes. It's proximal, like yes. Wrist is proximal to the, to the fingers. fingers. Yan, pahaba yan eh. Yan, palayo. Okay, distally, hanggang mag-tip of the toes. Sorry, guys. So, all of them are Wrong. Walang <laughs> answer siya. Trick question nga yan at to doctor. <laughs> Trick question. Okay. Please, dapat defend yung answer niyo. You go back to the anatomical position. So, parang simple lang, pero nakakalito. Uh, parang Juan is the father of Pedro. Therefore, Juan is the blank of Pedro's father. Juan is the father of Pedro. Therefore, Juan is the blank, blank of Pedro's father. Kung sinong makasagot niyan, bigyan ko ng 100 pesos. Lead, no? Okay, let's... Ah, ito pa. Which statement is correct? The hand is proximal to the wrist. Answer niyo na lang. The hand is proximal to the wrist. Correct or wrong? This style, though. Uh, yes. So this statement is incorrect. It should be this style. B. The hip is proximal to the distal third of the thigh. The hip is proximal to the distal third of the thigh. Tricky, you know? Iba dapat no, hip superior to the proximal. Mahal ang answer mo. Walang dapat-dapat dito eh. Dapat mag-answer tayo. Is the statement correct or incorrect? Incorrect or correct? Incorrect. No. Incorrect. Okay. Sino nagsabi yung dapat? Behas. What's your name again? Behas. Behas. Okay. So, when it comes to limb, pag limb ka, hindi ka masyado superior, it should be distal and proximal. Basta limb. Extremities. When it comes to body, yes, pwede. If you're standing up. But if it's about limb, is this style to proximal? So let's try to review. Anong tanong? The hips is proximal to the distal third of the To the side. distal third. So this is the hip. Medyo nasa body na nga siya. The hip. Hip is naturally proximal to the thigh. This is the thigh. Proximal, distal, hip, thigh. Kahit masabihin natin, hip is proximal to the distal third of the thigh. Pag sinabing distal third of the thigh, this thigh is divided into three partitions. Proximal third, middle third, 
and distal third of the thigh. So any part of the thigh, it's actually distal. So hip is proximal to the thigh, whether middle, proximal, third, whatever. Guess new or nakakalito? So this is correct. It's not wrong. Right? What's the answer ba? Uli? Wala nang nakaimik. Panalito tayo. Basta hipa is proximal to the thigh. Right, distal third, uh, proximal third, or middle third of the thigh. So it's always proximal. Okay, let's go to the wrist. Uh, so the wrist naman and base of the hand, hand are formed by a series of eight small carpal bones. The carpal bones are nakaarranged into rows, forming, it also sabihin ko naman, proximal row of Four carpal bones, meron siyang distal row of four carpal bones. So alin dito ang proximal? So proximal towards towards the forearm. Pinapapuntang tip is the distal end. So if these are the carpal bones, meron yan. Proximal row dito. Ito, can you see? If this is the distal part, tip of the finger, and the forearm is proximal. So if it's about the carpal bones, there is a proximal row of carpal bones and distal row of the carpal bones. So there are eight of them. Okay? So from uh, the bones in the proximal row, ito yon, running from lateral, alam niyo yung lateral, no? Thumb yan palaging lateral. So running from lateral side to the medial, Let's try to identify them. Scaphoid, lunate, triketrum ito, triketrum ito, and PC form. Apat ito sila. So meron sinasabing mnemonic. So long to pinky. I'm going to, but I'm going to discuss it in uh, more detail mamaya. So this is now the distal row. Yung distal row, ito na yung Trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. By the way, ang PC form pala, ikita mo yung PC form. It's a, more or less a P-shaped, rounded PC form bone. It's just on top of the triketrum. Um, it's so difficult pag hindi to actual, we're only uh, puro tayo uh, drawing. Okay, the PC form does projects more anteriorly kasi nakapatong lang ito sa trichotrum behind it. And if I'm going to ask, if I'm going to tell you, no, actually you can feel this PC form sa wrist ninyo. So try to feel your wrist, the ventral part, the anterior part. And from the anterior part, go to the most medial part or pinaka-base talaga ng uh, hand mo, line ng pinky, small finger, pero doon sa level ng wrist. Meron kayo na-feel na parang bukol? Ha? Ah, meron kayo? Hello? Ano? Tatawag ako ulit. <laughs> Kung sino nalang mag -answer? Anyone? And? Meron, Meron doc. Meron doc ha? Sir Riz, yes, parang may bukol-bukol siya. Oh no. May bukol-bukol siya. That's the PC form ha? Medial side of the wrist, PC form. Uh, one of the unique 
findings nito. No? Alam natin, carpal bones ito. This is the ventral portion. Pero since na feel nyo yung PC form, kung i-turn nyo yung wrist sa dorsum, makikita nyo na wala, wala na doon ang PC form. Hindi, mo, hindi nyo na mapapalpate. So, PC form is the only bone of the hand that you cannot see from the dorsum. Okay? Let's try to agree this, ha? Kasi ang PC form, itong PC form, nakapatong lang ito sa anterior surface ng triketrum. So, kung nasa anterior surface siya, nakapatong lang. So, sa dorsum, hindi mo na siya makikita. Ang dorsum, apat, patatlo lang nakikita mong carpal bone sa proximal part. Uh, naintindihan niyo ba yan? Nalilito kayo. Anyway ha, basta PC form, anterior portion lang ito nakikita, wala sa dorsum. So now, let's try to identify the carpal bones. The proximal row, scaphoid, lunate, trichectrum, PC form. Ito, PC form, nakapatong lang sa trichectrum. And the second row, hamate, Capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. Pag sinabi trapezium, ang technique dyan na trapezium, thumb, trapezium nasa thumb side. So at least yung M mo, meron din M ang thumb. So ano yung marirelate mo na carpal bone? Sa thumb, it's trapezium. So this is most lateral sa distal row. So another way of identifying is try, let's try to learn the Mnemonic. So long to pinky. So, so long to pinky. Pinky is little finger. And the PC form is in line sa little finger. Kasi nasa medial siya. So long to pinky. Scaphoid, lunate, long. To trichetrum, pinky, PC form. Then for the second row, a distal row, here comes the thumb. Here, hamate comes, capitate, the trapezoid, um, trapezium. Minsan nakakalito yung trapezoid and trapezium. Basta yung trapezium, um. So again, wrist carpal bone. I just would like you to get a picture of the, of the carpal bones. Okay, this is again the carpal bone, the proximal scaphoid, lunate, trichetrum, and PC form. Itong PC form, nakapatong lang ito anteriorly sa trichetrum. So, and PC form articulates only trichetrum. Wala nang iba. Unlike sila, yung iba, they articulate each other yung ibang carpal bones. Uh, what else? To the wrist joint, Yung three remaining of the proximal is the only one that articulates to the second row, the distal row of the carpal bones. Like, I'd like to share that capitate is the largest bone, largest carpal bone, and it is centrally located. Trapezium, ito, trapezium, thumb, a saddle shape. That's articular surface for the base of the first metacarpal of the thumb. Thus, it is very mobile. New thumb is really very mobile. And the second metacarpal is wedged and immobilized between the trapezium and trapezoid. Decapitate naman para sa middle finger, the third metacarpal. Well, the hamate naman, you can see the concave surfaces. This is for the fourth metacarpal and fifth metacarpal. One of the interesting findings, which uh, if we're not familiar, is the shape of the carpal bones. I try to, try to take a note of the dorsum of the wrist is broad and transversely arched or convex. You can feel the doors on the, the wrist, the doors of the wrist. It's convex. This is the dorsal part. It's convex. While the palmar aspect is concave. So incomplete articulation sila. 
actually the carpal bones form as a U shape. And the U shape nito, uh, between the ends of the carpal bone, once they are already articulated, there's a flexor retinaculum. And this flexor retinaculum spans from end to end of, of these carpal bones. The flexor retinaculum is uh, attached laterally. Again, huh, the thumb is lateral to the scaphoid and trapezium. And attached medially, it crosses to the other end, medially to the hamate and pisiform. Mas ma-appreciate ito ninyo mamaya. So, Together, now together, the carpal bones and the flexor retinaculum, it forms passageways a lot. And they call that carpal tunnel. And this is an osseo fibrous tunnel made up of the bone and fibrous, a osseous fibrous tunnel. With the carpal bones forming the walls in the floor and the flexor retinaculum forming the roof of the space. So the tendons are the flexor digitorum profundus, flexor digitorum brevis. Uh, there's also extensor pollicis longus. These are the tendons of these muscles that pass through in order to insert to the distal and uh, proximal phalanges. Uh, may neglecture na ba ito nito? Yung mga muscles of the forehand? I'm sure meron na. Are you okay? Are you okay? Inaantok kayo. Asensya na, one o'clock talaga nakakaantok talaga ito. So ito yung mga concern nito because of the tight area. Kung mag-overuse ang muscles nito, tendons, tapos may trauma on this area, pwede ito ma-inflame. If these tendons are inflamed, uh, all this will, this area will be tightened. Once these are tight, once there is tightness in this area because of swelling, ang nakakompromise dito is the median nerve. Naiipit na siya. So there's the tendency of uh, pain, pain and paralysis uh, of the nerves. Uh, pain and paralysis of those muscles in, in, innervated by the nerve. Do you get the picture? In the... <laughs> Yeah, basta yung wrist na yan, meron dyan flexor retinaculum na cross It's a U-shape. At saka sa loob, dun dumadaan yung mga tendons natin ng muscles of the forearm. So now, the, ito rin again, a flexor retinaculum. There's a flexor retinaculum makikita nyo. Ito naka-attach sa, sa trapezium and scaphoid. And it crosses to the other side. It goes to the hamate, the hook of hamate, and PC form. So it forms an arch. So the tendons passes to inside it. Hindi lang tendons, but the nerve, median nerve. Okay. So that's the flexor retinaculum. Now we go to the metacarpal bones. Uh, there are five metacarpal bones. But the base of the thumb is separated from other metacarpal bones. So this is, interestingly, you know, there's only one metacarpal bone that medio separated, and that's the metacarpal bone of the thumb. The rest of the metacarpal, the second, third, fourth, and fifth, are fused together. Bakit nag lang ito metacarpal? Somehow this is uh, important for the mobility and grasping. Kasi naman, kung nakadikit naman ito with the rest of the metacarpals, wala ka nang mahawakan kasi puro na lang flexion, wala na yung opposition. So somehow, God made this way for us to hold something. Uh, interesting also, the second, third, fourth metacarpal are fused together at their metacarpal heads. Uh, they have uh, there is such thing as a transverse metacarpal ligaments 
to hold them together para hindi sila maghiwalay. Uh, at the at the anterior surface of this second and third MP joint, no, is a very thick capsule. The thickness of this capsule para ma prevent ma cover hyperextension, prevent further hyperextension of the MP joint. And also, uh, ito yung may, meron tayong interesting din dito. Yung second and third MP joint, this is metacarpal bone, bone no? yung heads nila are somehow fixed. And uh, ito yung nakakatulong para ma ma-immobilize ito during your hand grip. Okay, let's go. Example lang, ano. Uh, this is more fixed, pero yung fourth and fifth MP joints is more loose. So when you try to grip, try to grip a pencil loosely, then it on situation. But if you're going to increase the grip more firmly, you may notice that when we tighten our grip, uh, the fifth metatarsal bones are pulled anteriorly. Ito ay fixed pa rin siya. Ito fixed. Ito fixed. But the fourth and fifth somehow moved anteriorly more so sa fifth uh, metacarpa. Thus improving the grip. Para talaga ito naka- Nakatouch ito sa palmar aspect. So the power of the grip comes from the little finger. The control of the grip comes from the thumb. So metacarpal metacarpal bones. Uh, there are five. They lie between carpal bones, so the bones of the fingers and thumb. And there's such thing as the carpal metacarpal bones between metacarpal and carpal. The metacarpophalangeal joints, the MP joints, is the one that joins the, the proximal phalanges. And the distal end of, the, of these metacarpal bones forms the knuckles of the hand. So the MP joint is between metacarpal and proximal phalanges. As I've said, it, is, it forms the knuckles because it has the heads of the metacarpals. The MP joints of fingers are condyloid. I think in the lecture I did Dr. Gasco. And can do four components of circumduction. It has uh, collateral ligaments. These collateral ligaments, this will prevent uh, movements of the joint from lateral deviation. Um, again, try to imagine again the position of the hand, anatomical position. Uh, the collateral ligaments are actually the lateral placement of ligaments uh, at the sides of the joint. This is to prevent uh, swaying from, from left to right from the lateral motion. So anteriorly, the capsule is thickened as palmar ligaments. Bucket thickened ang palmar ligaments ng MP joint para to prevent from hyperextension. So, you know naman, ang flexion medyo mobile siya, pero to prevent so much hyperextension kaya thickened yung carpal ligaments. Uh, there is also three deep transverse metacarpal ligaments. This helps to prevent metacarpals from spreading. So, kahit ito pa meron dyan ligaments talaga, they will prevent uh, metacarpal from spreading. And if, if I say there are four digital bands of palmar aponeurosis, it's about the palmar. Digital bands of palmar aponeurosis, it's, uh, there is a palmar aponeurosis here, and there's a thickened, four thickened bands. This represents uh, a band going towards the, the base of the proximal phalanx. 
So this is, again, the collateral ligaments, may collateral ligaments ito at the sides of the MP joint. This is very important. And uh, this, is, uh, this is for the attachment of the palmar aponeurosis, and it will prevent hyperextension of the joint, of the MP joint. Uh, this is the three, one, two, three transverse metacarpal ligaments. This will help prevent metacarpals from spreading. And there are four digital kinds of palmar aponeurosis. This is the one. And this is the palmar aponeurosis. And these are the four, one, two, three, four digital bands of the palmar aponeurosis. And they, con they actually came from the palmaris longus. And palmaris longus attaches uh, closely with the flexor retinaculum, remember, flexor retinaculum. And this somehow flattens to become the palmar aponeurosis. But even though it flattens, there is thickening uh, of these bands that will correspond to the digits, to the fingers of the hand. So interestingly, you know, uh, this palmar aponeurosis adheres close, closely to the uh, to the palm, the subcutaneous tissue. It blends to the subcutaneous tissue. So here's another drawing. This is the palmar aponeurosis. You can see that there are man minute uh, five at fibrous bands, or they call the fasciculi, uh, meaning to say that this subcutaneous layer of the skin is closely attached to the palmar aponeurosis. The reason for this is uh, for better grip. That, that, that's why they are closely attached. But the palm of the skin is thick, and somehow it rests on the pliable layer of the fat but it is anchored firmly to the palmar aponeurosis. So this is the palm of the hand. Can you see this clearly, or this is vague? Um, you can see here the palm of the hand. You can look at your hand also. Uh, there are creases, no? The palm is very thick, and it is hairless. Even ungoy hairless pa rin yung palm. So sebaceous glands are absent but it, is, it has sweat glands. Uh, there is the tendency to form calluses. And if you're a work workaholic or you're, you, you are doing frequently manual job, um, laborers. So ito sila talagang maraming kalyo ito. Kahit yung mga guitarists, mga musicians who are fond of playing guitars, sama meron mga calluses yan sila because they adapt to the frequent trauma um, for a specific purpose, so nagiging makapal sila. You can notice that the skin is corrugated and there are papillary ridges. You can look closely to the skin. May mafeel ka mga ridges and furrows. And yung mga ridges nito offer, somehow offer the gripping ability of the hand, um, preventing it from slipping. It's like kung may gulong tayo sa sakyan, marami siyang mga diba, ridges. Pero kung napapanas na yan, di rin na yung maupay mag magamit ang panas ng gulong sa sakyan. So ridges of the terminal fingers, this, is, this has been a very unique pattern because hindi puro parehong ridges ng palm ng distal finger natin. That's why ginagamit ito sa forensic Forensic, uh, it has a forensic uh, significance, the fingerprints. Uh, these are the ridges. So there are joint lines. You can see joint lines for the distal interphalagial joint. If, uh, we call the distal crease. This is the proximal crease for the fingers. And there is a, a uh, metacarpophalangeal crease for this between the palm and the fingers. And there's also the palmar creases. 
There's a distal palmar crease. This is the middle palmar crease. This is the proximal palmar crease. The proximal palmar crease is actually the radial longitudinal. And the middle palmar crease is the proximal transverse. And the distal is the distal transverse. Um, Here is another drawing, palm of the hand. So these are the creases formed by the by the joints, and there's are there are also creases of the palm. In Down syndrome, the distal and middle crease tend to be united into a prominent single transverse crease. So kung ganun mangyari, usually this has a diagnostic importance. If you have a single palmar crease, single transverse crease, and we call that simian crease, they say it's of diagnostic importance for Down syndrome. Kung meron kanyan, you're unique. Try to look at your palm. Okay, now we go to phalangeal bones and their joints. So the digits are numbered one to five. How many fingers do we have? There are, we have four fingers and one thumb. Imana pipiloso ko ganon sila. I I have only four fingers. Pero sa pagkabata natin. Five fingers. But anyway, medically, anatomically, this we call these digits are numbered one to five. One starts from the lateral, from the thumb, and goes to the pointer, middle, ring, and the little finger as number five. So the right uh, for the phalangeal, no, for the phalangeal bones, there is a distal, middle, and proximal phalanges. The proximal phalanges is the one that attached to the metacarpal. For the second to, four, second to fifth digits, there are three phalanges each. For the first digit, for the thumb, there are only two phalanges. So I'm going to ask, how many phalanges do we have? So there are 14. So this is 3 times 4, 12, plus 2, 14 phalanges. So usually I give this in the exam, but since we are, uh, we use a different kind of exam, I don't know if I can, I can use this as an identification. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, um, as long as you're very, as long as you're familiar about this, these are just how many mus how many muscles, uh, how many bones like naman? Bones uh, hand. So what's the clinical significance of uh, of these bones? Um, once you have fracture, wow, medyo baldado tayo. Due to our constant use of the hands and the rest of our upper limbs, an injury to any of these talaga will cause a significant loss of uh, ability. Medyo nakakainis. Maski nga sprain, medyo nakakainis. So many fractures result from a hard fall. Pag mahulog ka, there's a natural tendency to, to stretch your hand for protection. But somehow that protection uh, will cost you um, awesome injury. So the resulting impact, no, there's a transmission of force coming from the hand because of the impact, it may also result not only fracture of the hand, but bones, but also the even the no, even the radio ulna, even the humerus. So these uh, injuries are especially common in elderly because of the osteoporotic kind of bone. The most common so far is the colis fracture, and we call this a dinner fault deformity. So let's go to the movements of the hands. So again, no, this is this has uh, 
significance on the anatomy. Wait up. Hello guys, are you okay? Okay lang kayo? Yes, yes po. Sige. Dito na tayo sa movement of the hands. So, this way, who can answer this A, B, C, D, E, F? I'm black. Okay, my lecture mo na ako. Mamaya, i-answer nyo, ha? Okay, let's go to the movements. Movements of the digits, no? Uh, regarding the fingers, uh, try to imagine there is an axial line nasa middle finger. Where the finger motion ito, ha? Imagine... Put in your imagination, there is an axial line of the middle finger. And anything that's going outside from the middle finger is the finger abduction. So, ganito ito, pag gumanon, that's finger abduction. So, ad ad abduction naman is the return from abduction position towards the... Towards the Axial line to the middle finger, that's abduction. Abduction, abduction. All right? So let's go to the thumb. So the thumb, the man, uh, remember the, the anatomical position of the hand? The abduction of the thumb is the movement of the thumb should be anterior. Ang makalimutan niyo naman, anatomical position. Remember, the thumb is faced forward sa inyo. So kung mag, ano ka, mag thumb abduction, the thumb moves anteriorly. So ganun yan, anteriorly. And perpendicular to the palm. So that should be the abduction. Kung adduction, babalik. Babalik sa, sa palm. So abduction, going uh, anterior movement of the thumb and adduction, AD, from the abducted position moves the thumb posteriorly back, towards, back toward the palm. So this is the abduction and the adduction. So the finger... Abduction, the thumb abduction, finger abduction, and the abduction from abduction position goes back to the palm. So flexion of the fingers, ganito lang. Fingers, no? Fingers. Flexion, extension. But how about, how about the thumb? Thumb extension. The thumb extension is from the side. It goes outward, goes laterally, moves the thumb away from the pinky, away from the pinky. 
goes away from the thinking. In the, in the anterior, the anterior is abduction, huh? is away from the pinky, away from the fingers here. From flexion naman, it goes back from the extension, it goes back even ito, extension, flexion may, like, may be like this. Extension, flexion. Bisan pa ito maglapos. That's the flexion. Okay. Can we now identify this? Letter A, what is the movement? For abduction. Yes, that's thumb abduction. Now you have to specify thumb abduction. Letter B, thumb abduction. abduction. That's correct, thumb abduction. C, thumb extension. Extension. Thumb extension. D, thumb flexion. Thumb flexion. E. Opposition. Opposition. Yes, opposition. Opposition. Basta nga ni nagdudukot iton small finger and thumb. That's opposition. Eh kung magdudukot naman sa ibang finger, anong tawag yan? Opposition. Opposition pa rin. Ah, oh, pwede no? Pero... Uh, okay. anat uh, anatomist would would label that as a position a a position uh, yeah, yeah. ang opposition lang daw are for the pinky and the thumb and, um, but for the the rest of the fingers a position pero mas concerned tayo sa opposition okay how about f pronation supination Okay, ah, uh, pronation. Sino nagsabi pronation? Ako, Doc. <laughs> Sige, define pronation. Pronation. Nasugat po. Sige, pakita mo sa amin. <laughs> pronation, tas supination. Pronation, it pumps facing downward. Supination, pumps facing upward. Okay, sige. Baka nagkaroon kayo nag... Uh, medyo uh, nakaka-confuse. Pronation, supination is all about forearm, ha? Huh? It's all about forearm. So the forearm, think about the forearm. It's the movement of the forearm. So kung mag-pronation ka, the forearm is uh, medyo so in relation to the elbow, yung dorsum of your forearm is above. Let's say nakaflex yung ano mo. Nakaflex yung... Can you, can you see me? Huh? Can you see me? Uh, ikita niyo ba ako? This is pronation. This is more on the forearm. Supination, like that. The supination is relation to forearm. Huh? It's not about wrist. Pronation, supination is more about the movement of the forearm. Remember that, ha? Yung pinapakita ko is the wrist. Ganito, Bye-bye. But fixed and wrist, fixed and forearm, ganon ang motion. So Indian pronation, supination, right? Pronation, supination. Pronation, supination. Pronation, supination. It's all about forearm. Deviation. Yes, malapit na. Yeah, deviation. It's correct. Radial and ulnar deviation. Yes. So radial, saan papunta ang radial? Laterally. Yes, correct. It's towards the thumb. No? Radial, towards the thumb, kasi ito man yung normal position. Palabas, paloob. Ano yung isang deviation? Ulnar deviation. Ulnar deviation. Okay, so this is radial and ulnar deviation. So it can be wrist abduction in relation to the body or abduction going towards the body. But more appropriate yung radial ulnar deviation.
Nice. Okay. So ito yung explanation. Ulnar deviation and radial deviation. So yung wrist, there is a flexion, extension. Okay. Question. If the palm is flat, facing the ceiling, abduction of the thumb results in movement in which direction? If the palm is flat and facing the ceiling, abduction of the thumb results in movement in which direction? Superior. Lateral. Superior. Superior. So, guess, you pa? the answer? You know. May nagsabi superior, may lateral. Lateral, Doc. Lateral? Sige. Saan kaya lateral? Saan papuntang lateral? Ang lateral. Away from the body. Okay, the question again. Away Is from the, the palm. Away from the palm. Of course. It's a weight from the palm. Medyo correct na dyan. Away from the palm. In which direction? Away from the palm. Okay. Nandiyan na yan, ha? Eh, kaso meron tayong kwan dito, eh. May question. If the palm is flat and facing the ceiling. If the palm is flat, facing the ceiling. Abduction of the thumb results in movement in which direction? Of course, mm -hmm. tama ka. For Away ceiling. from uh, the palm. Uh, yes, toward the ceiling. Yes. Ceiling. So, correct yung away from the palm and towards the ceiling. Mahano ganula ito? A corny, corny ganula. All right. Now we go to the tenor muscles. Tenor muscles, there are four muscles of the tenor, and it arises from the flexor retinaculum and its lateral bony pillars. Remember, there are bony pillars ng, ng wrist, tubercle, and uh, the scaphoid, and tubercle, the fissure. So dito ang origin ng tenor muscles. So there are four tenor muscles. Abductor pollicis brevis, opponens pollicis, opponens pollicis, flexor pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis. So may I ask, bakit kaya sinabing abductor pollicis brevis? Bakit brevis? Meron um, opponens pollicis. Yes, somebody? It refers to the thumb. Uh, the polizis refers to the thumb, you're correct. But ang tanong ko, brevis. Any, any idea? Sino, na, sino yung master niya, nyo na anatomy dyan? Rashida. Rashida. Rashida? Rashida? Are you around? Judy. Judy. Are you around? Yes, no. Okay. May idea ka ba sa ad abductor politis brevis? Bakit brevis? Wala talaga, Doc. Wala, yun? What well, good? Okay, brevis is short, huh? Short. Usually short and tau again. There's such thing as abductor pollicis longus. All right? So, ganon din flexor pollicis brevis. There's such thing as flexor pollicis longus. So, this abductor pollicis brevis, this is shorter muscles. And that's why nandito lang ito sa tenor eminence. Are you familiar with tenor eminence? 
Ito, this is the tenor portion. All right. So there are four muscles. Uh, yung abductor pollicis brevis. So it also does abduction of the thumb. And somehow the abductor pollicis brevis helps out in the abduction of the thumb. Opponent to yung abduction, ha? Opponent's pollicis, it's papunta sa pinky para mag -opose. And flexor pollicis brevis, it's going towards the thumb from extension to the flexion. Adductor pollicis, ito na yung bumabalik, yung bumabalik na sa pang. Adductor. So ito yung senar muscles. These are intrinsic muscles of the thumb. This is adductor, the one that pulls the thumb towards the palm. This is the flexor pollicis brevis. The flexor pollicis brevis is the one that flexes the thumb more on empty joint. And there are the flexor pollicis longus. It flexes the tip of the thumb. So these are part of the muscles of the forearm. Muscles uh, of forearm, anterior location. The opponent's pollicis, ito, is the opponent's pollicis. This will pull the, the proximal phalanx anteriorly to oppose also the small finger. So okay, yeah? just remember there are four muscles of the thumb. Abductor pollicis brevis, opponent's pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, and abductor pollicis. Please take note, yung abductor AOF, POA, uh, abductor pollicis brevis, opponent's pollicis, and flexor pollicis brevis, are innervated by the median nerve. Yung abductor muscles is innervated by the ulnar nerve. Paano nyo ma-differentiate? Kung ano ang pinakamalalim, yun ang innervated ng ulnar nerve. Kung ano yung pinakalateral and more superficial, the flexor, opponents, and abductor is innervated by the median nerve. Nalabas din ito sa exam. Okay. Oh, let's go to the hypotenor muscles. The hypotenor muscles are mirror images of the tenor. Opposite kasi sila eh. Ito yung hypotenor. Ito yung tenor. So they arise from the flexor retinaculum and its medial bony pillars. Yung katulad nung una, yung sinabi ko no, yung tenor muscles, and dito yung mga uh, la lateral pillars, do not originate yung mga tenor muscles. Yung mga hypotenor naman, dito naman, nag-originate sa medial pillars of the carpal bone. So, arise from flexor retinaculum and its medial bony pillars, pisiform and hook of hami. So, in action on the MP joint of these muscles, what are the hypotenor muscles? There are three, abductor digiti minimi, flexor, flexor digiti minimi brevis, opponents digiti minimi. So pag sinabi mo may brevis ito, may longus ito. So pag sinabi yung longus naman, naka-attach yan sa base ng distal uh, base ng distal phalanx. So itong hypotenor muscles will act on the MP joint of the fifth digit. So there is an abduction, there is flexion, there is opposition of the little finger. So that's the job of hypotenor muscles to give strength, power grip, na power during the gripping. So ito yan, hypotenor muscles, abductor, digiti minimi, flex, flexor, digiti minimi, brevis, and ponis pollicis. Ito yan, abductor, pansin nyo nasa lateral kasi para mag spread. Ito, lateral ito. That's abductor. Tapos mag-flexor, mag-flexor na. 
opponents para to oppose uh, to act as an opposition with the together with the um, the sacrotenor muscles. So what's the nerve supply of the hypotenor muscles? So medially, medially all muscles are innervated by the ulnar nerve. Ito ah, kayang UN ulnar nerve, ulnar nerve, ulnar nerve. So now we have other intrinsic muscles of the hand. We call that interossi muscles. There's such thing as a dorsal interosseous muscle and the palmar interosseous muscles. All of them are, are originated at the medial side, medial and lateral side of the of the metacarpals. So let's go to dorsal interosseous muscle. Papansin this dorsal interosseous muscle it's bipennate, para siyang Para siyang coconut leaves, bipennate. So it converges to have a tendon that attaches at the at the lateral portion of, so let's say, if this is the radial, if this is the thumb area, lateral portion of of the second digit. Proximal phalanx of the second digit. So there are four dorsal interosseous muscles. One, two, three, four. Yung dorsal interosseous muscle, kikita niyo yung insertion niya. This is to abduct. When this is the axial, the midline, the middle finger, this will abduct. This will adapt the fingers. This is the job of dorsal interossi muscles. Para malalaman na very effective yung abduction mo, look, yeah, you can resist, no? So that's abduction. Brought, brought by the action of dorsal interosseous muscle. So another mnemonic is dub, dub, dub. Uh, dorsal and abduction, dub. But for the palmar interosseous muscle, it's ad. Yung dorsal is abduction. Yung palmar is adduction. It's towards. Look, it's not bipennate, it's unipennate. And it attaches at the base of the distal. Uh, proximal base of proximal phalanx para lang ma-adapt ang fingers. So ano muscle that causes finger abduction? Dorsal interosseous muscle. Ano yung muscle that causes abduction of the fingers? Palmar. They are palmar interosseous muscle. So dab, pad. Add up, add up, add up. Okay. So ito naman. So ano yung nerve innervation ng interossi? Anything deep, anything deep is ulnar nerve. So all interosseous muscle supplied by the ulnar nerve. So now we go to, uh, this is not the interosseous, this is already lumbricalis. Uh, this is wrong, huh? Now we we talk about lumbrical muscles. Not interosseous, tapos ang interosseous. So there are four lumbricalis. This is this is superficial than the interosseous. So one, two, three, four. The four interosseous. The there is first there is one, two, three, four. Now the first two, since this is near the thumb is innervated by the median nerve. The third and fourth lumbricalis, not interossia, I will correct this. Uh, this should be corrected. This is inter, uh, this is lumbricalis. The third and fourth 
since this is more medial, is innervated by ulnar nerve, right? Both of all lumbricales, ang function niya is to flex the MP joint. So this is your MP joint, this is your MP joint. Ito yan. This is to flex the MP joint. This is brought about by the action of the lumbricalis. So anong action ng lumbricalis? Flexion of the MP joint. So for the first, uh, first and second lumbricalis supplied by the, since malapit ito sa thumb, it's median nerve. Uh, this, the third and fourth lumbricalis, since malapit ito sa pinky, is ulnar nerve. Anything malapit sa pinky, it's ulnar nerve. Anything malapit sa thumb, it's median nerve. Right? So let's go to ulnar nerve. Uh, ulnar nerve kasi is somehow very important sa hand. Um, uh, okay, I'll give you this drawing. So ulnar nerve, no, it enters hand by passing between PC form and the hook of the handmade. Dito siya dumadaan. Alalim. Alalim. But still, uh, outside the flexor retinaculum, but actually this is covered by the palmaris brevis. So, wala akong drawing of palmaris brevis. This is covered. Once lumampas ito sa PC form, it, it divides into deep and superficial ulnar nerve. Yung deep, doon na nagsusupply yung mga Vibricalis at saka interossi. So yung mga superficial, dito na yung uh, sensory. So yung sensory, uh, sensory supply niya is one and a half fingers. Medially, ha? Pinky, pag ulnar nerve. The whole fifth finger and one half of uh, fourth finger, fourth digit. So one and a half na siya. Yan ang supply ng ulnar nerve when it comes to sensory. So it supplies the hypothenar muscles. It supplies all the interossi. It supplies the second and, oh no, third and fourth lumbricalis muscle. Third and fourth lumbrical muscles. Okay? Now we go to median nerve. Median nerve, nerve naman, those two hands, midpoint with the wrist sa loob ng carpal tunnel. It enters the palm through the carpal tunnel adhering to deep surface of the flexor retinaculum. Then appears, uh, then appears uh, deep to the prolongation of the palmaris longus. So somehow, pag ano na siya, pag lumabas na siya, uh, nag-break na siya, nag fan out na siya to provide this sensory supply for the three and a half fingers. It supplies the thumb and supplies the uh, pointer finger. It supplies the middle finger, so three fingers, and supplies one half the ring finger. So three and a half, three and a half, uh, the lateral three and a half. Digits. Okay? So the median nerve actually innervates only five muscles in the hand. Uh, you remember yung five muscles in the hand, the four muscles ng thumb, pero tatlo ang sinusupply niya. The flexor, opponents, and abductor, abductor polizis. And another two, sinabi ko kanina, the first two lumbricales. Yun lang innervate ng muscle. So there are five muscles na innervate niya. The tenar, the abductor, not the tenar muscles, abductor police brevis, pons police brevis, flexor police brevis, and the first and second lumbricales. Five muscles na. Yung sensory, yung three and a half digits niya. Kung ma-paralyzed yung median nerve, what happens? There's an ape hand. Bakit kaya ape hand? Ah, sige, explain ko na lang mamaya. 
So the blood supply naman coincides with the nerve supply of the hands and the fingers. The blood supply uh, mainly comes from the radial artery and ulnar artery. And there is such thing as the a superficial palmar arc and the deep palmar arc. And the superficial palmar arc, uh, somehow there is the uh, anastomosis with the a branch of radial artery. And deeper to the radial artery, it provides the bulk of the deep, superf uh, deep palmar arc. And it has an anastomosis also with the ulnar artery. And each has branches. So it branch out uh, digitally, the lateral and the medial for all digits of the hand. So actually it has a rich blood supply <clears throat> and there's an anastomosis, <clears throat> excuse me, with the radial artery and ulnar artery. Now let's go to the hand sensory. Sensory, as I mentioned, no, the ulnar nerve supplies the sensory perception for one and a half digit. So this is more for the pinky and one half of the ring finger. So this is the ulnar nerve sensory uh, supply. For the median nerve, it's three and a half for the finger, for the for the pointer finger, middle finger, and the ring finger. So it's three and a half. And uh, part of the radial artery here is the dorsum of the thumb. And the rest, it's different. It's uh, already the uh, musculocutaneous and medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. So this is the hands hand sensory. Okay, did you understand some of this? I hope you did. So let's go to the disorders affecting the hand para maintindihan natin. Uh, Kung managlalaro ka ng basketball, they have seen this patient uh, because of this accidental lang na pag sumalo ka ng basketball, somehow it, it, it bumps to the tip of the fingers and if you're not careful, uh, somehow uh, baguhan, it causes rupture of this extensor tendon. Uh, usually this is extensor digitorum profundus, the deeper uh, long tendon of extensor part of the fingers. Dito napuputo. So once napuputo ito, you will produce a mallet finger. So the extensor is a bulls. The, orig uh, the insertion is a bulls. Sometimes the tendon a bulls is the pieces of distal phalangeal bone. bone. Um, what else? Let's go to the collis fracture. It is one of the most common fractures of the hand that involves the wrist. It's not really hand, but so, somehow because uh, of this closeness of the forearm and the wrist, um, and because it is caused by the outstretched hand involving the hand. This is uh, the result of the fracture, we call this fracture. So the treatment ranges from simple immobilization, lalagay lang sila ng cemento, uh, but it has to be corrected uh, with careful apposition. Mahirap naman na, na cemento ito, tapos there is uh, there's no correction in the displacement. There's also a fracture of metacarpals. This is caused, uh, is commonly caused by fracture, uh, located fracture of the neck due to boxers uh, during boxing. For sinuntok mo na yung mga walls, it will cause fracture of the metacarpals. Fracture of the phalangeal bones, uh, the only way to treat. One way treating, just oppose uh, together the, the joining fingers. You just strap them. Some of them, they open to really uh, insert plates. So other disorders is the infection of the finger that involves the tissue of the edge of the uh, fingernail. 
we call this paralympia. This is so painful. And this is caused by staff and strep. Um, treatment here is drainage of the pus. You have to incise it here to, to remove the collection of pus to allow the pus to drain out. Oral antibiotics is very important here. So paranoia treatment, wound care, collection of pus, drainage of pus, oral antibiotics, and daily dressing. Mm -hmm. So paranoia is related to the infection of that involves the tissue and edges of the fingernail. That's paranoia. Fell on the man. It's infection at the fingertip. There is pus at the at the volar aspect at the tip of the finger, and we, there is an abscess. This infection is located in the fingertip pad, a soft tissue associated with it. It's because of a sensitivity, because of the rich nerve supply here, this is very, very painful. And the problem here, because of that thickness of the anterior surface of the fingers, uh, sometimes this causes um, resorption of the bone and deformity. That's, that's why Early, early removal of the pus is very important. The felon treatment here is incision and drainage. It's either you open here at the front or you open at the sides. Just to uh, eliminate, eliminate, remove the pus. Of course, antibiotics is important. There are no man infection due to puncture wounds or because you are diabetic, you are very prone to infection. Uh, this is what we call cellulitis. Cellulitis is inflammation of soft tissue. There's one itis. And this should be treated with, uh, with care and correct antibiotics. Okay, there is such thing as dupoi trans contracture. This dupoi trans contracture is a high deformity that usually develops uh, over years. And the condition affects a layer of tissue that lies under the skin of your palm, Vito, eventually creating a thick cord that can pull one of or more fingers into a bent position. So you remember na meron talaga ito palmaris aponeurosis. If there is a uh, uh, an infection or whatever that caused fibrosis, Ito yung naninigas to the point na they cause contracture. So this is very, this, uh, this is a nasty thing for, for someone who has this because the only solution here is to really uh, submit the patient to the plastic surgery. So what's this? This is wrist graft. And this is related to the hand, but the pathology is not coming from the hand. The pathology is, is due to the nerve, uh, denervation, affected the nerve. What nerve affected by this wrist drop? Siguro alam nyo na yun. Tapos na kayo sa brachial plexus. What causes wrist drop? Anyone? Matatapos na tayo. Radial? Yes, radial nerve. Um, so this is radial nerve. Ito naman. What's this? Tapos na rin ito, but because the ultimate effect, deformity is located the hand, at least we should know how to inspect the hand. So, look, huh? there he is. Atrophy of the thin, uh, thinner, atrophy here, All right? The atrophy here, what's this? This is more or less what deformity, ape hand. Yung medyo naka ano siya, naka dikit na yun, ano, medyo naka, naka flat lang siya. Pag medyo naka, naka yung finger, that means walang nag-abduct 
walang nag-a-post, puro lang patras. So, anong paralysis dito? Cape hand. Papal benediction. Slot na ito because of atrophy. Anong sabi ko? Anong nagsusupply ng median nerve? <laughs> sabi ko ng median nerve. <laughs> anong nagsupply ng thinner and eminence? Thinner muscles is the median nerve. Okay? <laughs> All right. So, if there's paralysis of the median nerve, you'll have atrophy here. And there is no more abduction, there is no opponents, there is no uh, flexion also. So in tendency, atras ang thumb. So yan ang lumalabas. Since hindi niya na kaya mag-flex ang first lumbricals, nakaganon na siya. Di ba first lumbricalis, one and two, flexion of the MP joint. So wala naman siyang action na dahil paralysis, tumaganon na siya. Ito meron pa sa palmar, uh, ulnar. So yan, sinasabing pal papal benediction. Yung iba talaga, ganun siya, escape hand was parang flat na flat siya dito. So that's median nerve paralysis. Nakikita ni Ann yan marami sa physical therapy. Kung sino pa dyan physical therapist. This one, what's this? We call this claw. Claw. claw finger. What nerve? Tatatlo lang nerve ng ano ha? Radial nerve, medial nerve. This is ulnar nerve. nerve. Okay, claw hand. Claw hand. Claw. Claw hand. Ito, ano ito? Ano yan? Alam niyo ba yan? Yes. Nantok na ba kayo? <laughs> Anong oras na? Hindi na ako makapunta sa clinic. 2.40. Pwede pa. Anong oras na? 2.41. 2.40. Oh, umalis? Parang may umalis. So ito ah. Alam mo yung sipater? Oh, may umalis na. Ma'am, bumalik. Alam niyo yung sipater? Hindi. So, plan. Sige, what is the muscle that responsible for the reflection of the MP joint? What muscle? Lumbricalis muscles. Lumbricalis. Dapat may tip ako. Sino nagsalita nun? <laughs> ako po, Dok. Kurita, ano? Yay! Diyani. Post ka pala. Okay, what's this? So, what's this? <laughs> okay, this is a hand. Tama ito. Thank you guys. Alam ko, pagod na kayo. Good luck to your exams. Thank you, Doc. 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 Bye-bye. Thank you, Doc.